Shark FT rotator cuff repair for a new transosseous suture technique. 12 months of follow-up. Arthroscopic Association of North America, 32nd Annual Meeting. Paolo Baldi, Michele Verdano, Gabriele Campochiaro, Andrea Pellegrini, Fabio Catani, Francesco Ceccarelli. No conflict of interest for any author. The rotator cuff tear is one of the most frequent musculoskeletal injuries, but the real incidence is not clearly known because it's usually asymptomatic. Even if a cuff tear is more common in patients with shoulder pain than asymptomatic ones, the prevalence of the complete tears in the general population is estimated at approximately 20.7% and it increases with increasing age. The advent of the arthroscopic technique has re revolutionized the approach to shoulder surgery. In the last years, we have attended to the appearance of many devices of fixation, screwed or beaten anchors, made of materials like titanium, peak or reabsorbable ones, push lock, verse lock and transosseous suture like the new Shark FT. The transosseous repair fixation system represents today the most reliable surgical technique from a biological and mechanical point of view. Even if it still needs to be improved, it gives the hand of surgeons a better tendon bone contact and a better tendon distribution with no complications like anchor pullout or device migration. Transosseous gives the hands of surgeons a better tendon bone contact and a better tendon distribution. By a new finite element model, we have been able to measure contact area and pressure distribution. The Shark FT technique interposes a device between sutures and bone in an arthroscopic transosseous approach. This avoids the bone cut phenomenon and stabilizes the construct. The thick bone bridge permits us to apply a properly distributed compression that prevents tendon bone detachment. In a computer simulation, we have compared various configurations single row, double row, suture bridge, transosseous shark FT. The transosseous approach with shark FT is able to produce a footprint contact area comparable to suture bridge approach as calculated in our computer model. The device in the large frontal slot is able to load the number of sutures that can pass in the 3 mm hole transosseous canal. This flexible approach permits us to manage from small to massive tears with a single device. The closed loop that can be reproduced, as in old transosseous approach, is very effective from a biomechanical standpoint. It permits both in abduction and adduction to have some active sutures that are applying a compression over the tendon, avoiding tendon bone separation and sliding. The operative technique consists of few easily guided steps using the compass approach. Before starting the technique, we suggest to heavily decorticate the footprint area where we expect the transosseous tunnels to come out. Create the hole in the proximal region of the footprint, sinking the 3mm drill bit up to the stop marker.
insert the vertical guide of the compass into the hole executed until the spacer comes into contact with the humerus. Adjust the movable side guide in the desired position, blocking it with the knob on the side. Insert the lateral cannula on the movable guide on the side to reach the lateral cortex. Lower the side stop of the movable guide. Insert the 3mm cannulated drill bit. Run the distill opening of the transosseous tunnel until the lateral stops. Remove the drill shutter cutter, keeping it in its position, and insert the K wire with the knob. Lift the vertical suture blocker and push the K wire until it stops. You can check the correct passing of the K wire by acting on the suture blocker. Insert inside the drill cannulation the conveying wire for the sutures and keep the suture blocker raised, then move forward leaning to the bone. Once fully inserted the conveying wire, lower and hold the suture blocker. Verify the correct locking of the conveying wire by pulling it from the side. While holding down the suture blocker, remove the vertical guide. Free the conveying wire from the vertical guide of the compass and remove all the components of the compass. Use the conveying wire to drag the sutures attached to the front part of Shark FT, accompanying the device until the distal opening. Impact Shark FT to obtain the contact of the back surface of the device with the cortical wall. Pass all the suture limbs through the cuff and tie the medial knots. Make a knot with nylon shuttle suture and two suture limbs as shown. Then pass the sutures through the proximal eyelet of Shark FT. Tie the knot between medial and lateral limbs of the sutures to obtain a suture bridge like effect. From September 2010 to January 2013, 40 patients, 19 male and 21 female, were treated with an average age of 63.6 years, range from 41 to 77, and a rotator cuff tear that affected supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons, 1 to 3 cm wide, by MRI evaluation. All patients were assessed with the constant score of 0 to 100 points in the preoperative phase and at 12 months follow-up. At the time of follow-up, the patients underwent an MRI for healing evaluation and X-ray for post-operative control. All patients underwent arthroscopic cuff repair with Shark FT device and were immobilized with a shoulder sling in the post-operative phase for a mean period of 15 days, the range of 7 to 21 days. All patients underwent the same rehabilitation protocol based on depressor humeral head, balancing external and internal rotator, deltoid and scapulohumeral rhythm exercises for a mean period of 3 months the range between two to five months. All the patients were clinically evaluated with a mean follow-up of 18.6 months, the range 12.4 to 22.3, showing a mean constant score before surgery of 24.5 points, the minimum 16.4 and the maximum 68.1. Three months after surgery, the mean value was 63.1 points, minimum 43.6 and a maximum of 82. At six months, 83.2 points, with the minimum at 47 and the maximum at 89.5. And finally, at 12 months, with 86.9 points, 
the minimum of 47.5 and the maximum at 90.4. At 12 months, all patients underwent an X-ray and MRI for rotator cuff and surgical repair evaluation, showing no device mobilization or rotator cuff re-tear. In our study, patients were treated for the same type of rotator cuff tear affecting supraspinatus and infraspinatus, 1 to 3 cm wide. At 12 months after the surgical operation, MRI examination highlighted a very good biological tendon healing without re-tears. Constant score values were satisfactory and all the patients returned to normal daily activities. We did not have device migration. This new arthroscopic technique has overcome the traditional transosseous approach deficiencies. In conclusion, the study shows a good functional outcome of all the patients at 12 months of follow-up, no migration devices or other complications, and a new easy and reproducible arthroscopic technique for transosseous suture. The authors thank the scientific board for the support provided. Thank you for your attention.